Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see a good turnout here. And welcome to everybody who is with us online. I am a president of the European Federation of Hard of Hearing People. And today I am chairing the session on sign languages methods and teaching methods and also developing signing communities. I am a cochlear implant user and hard of hearing person. And as an introduction to us, deafness and hearing loss represent such a wide spectrum of communication methods like lip reading, I do what? Captioning, assistive listening technologies. And finally, what we will be talking about today, sign language. So we are not homogeneous, but it is important to know that this most important thing is what the individual needs and what they needs are. And here we are today to discuss that kind of topic, specifically for sign language users. So let me introduce you all to our first speaker from ICAL Foundation, who is Diana Agudelo Royas. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Apologies, you can always pronounce yourself and improve on that. Who is a project lead at the foundation and she has come all the way from Colombia. So Diana, floor is yours. Thank you, Lydia. Uh, well, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very thankful uh, because this is the opportunity to tell the world about different practices or different ways to do the things uh, than the traditional ways to, ed to educate kids. So, well, this is what I'm going to talk about. Well, uh, yes, as Lydia said, my name is Diana Agudelo Rojas. Uh, I work for the Fundación ICAL uh, from Colombia. We are located in the whole heart of our country uh, in a department, it's called a department that is called Cundinamarca, uh, where we bring attention, education, uh, also health attention to deaf, but not just deaf, uh, also hearing students uh, from 10 different uh, cities or municipalities of the department. Mm, we are an organization with more than 60 years of history, uh, with a school, as I told you, with inclusive education for children and young people from 3 to 25 years old. Uh, these people belong to low-income families, um, high psychosocial risk uh, contexts, and they are mainly from rural areas of the Department of Cundinamarca. Uh, there, we focus to give answers to different learning styles, uh, of, as I told you, of deaf students, but not just deaf students. Um, this has brought us to develop educational practices that differ from the traditional educational practices that are given in a country for deaf students and regarding inclusion in general. Um, so, this has been happening since the past and still today. Well, what we practice is called inverse inclusion. So what is inverse inclusion? It's mainly an inclusive education service delivery model where deaf students represent the majority of our students' population and we have a group of hearing students that are included into the big group of students. Um, therefore, we made an inverse way of inclusion as we have the uh, hearing students included into the environment of the deaf students. Uh, that's why it's called inverse. Uh, it works the opposite way uh, that is traditionally used in Colombia and I know that in many other countries that uh, the deaf students are the ones included. Here is different. Um, how did it all begin? Uh, I, as I told you, the organization has a history of more than 60 years, but the model and this way of giving education in an inverse inclusion way uh, is been working since 20 years ago. Um, it just was born organically. Uh, it was not part of a previous plan and it began as we started receiving the siblings of the deaf students as part of our students group. Um, 
we well, we began with the siblings, but later it started growing and we began receiving cousins and other kids uh, that, you know, wanted to learn the Colombian Sign Language and wanted to be included as well uh, in the model that we were developing. Um, so it was the motivation of these hearing students uh, that wanted to communicate with the deaf students what inspired their inclusion to what uh, used to be an exclusively school for deaf students. Um, so this helped to build a real inclusive environment and a collaborative educational environment different from what was traditionally used in Colombia. Well, all this process has led uh, the construction of a strong school signing community where different learning styles are connected. Here we have uh, the learning styles uh, of total deaf students. Uh, also, we have the style of students with other levels of deafness. And we have, in addition, uh, the learning style of the ones that are hearing one. So we have th three different groups. Um, the students that are uh, that have other levels of deafness, they also have access to other other educational practices such as logogenia and the use of verbotonal method. Uh, so that uh, it kind of looks like a big mixture, but it's just that we give answers to all the needs of the different kinds of uh, learning styles that our students have. Um, what connects them? Basically, they share and have in common the interest and the learning of the Colombian Sign Language. Uh, it's just their language, it's the way they connect uh, and they share daily at the school. Um, and some of the actions or the different practices that we have taken to make it uh, better to improve this community of sign language, sign and language, is that parents are included in the process. Parents as well have this process of learning the Colombian Sign Language. And uh, our teachers have a special preparation before and during the process of teaching uh, so they can become the best supporting referrals for the students. Um, as I know, I don't have a lot of time. I just want to conclude. Uh, I'm a sociologist, so then from my sociologist perspective, having sign language as a base for the social interaction of students with different hearing conditions makes it possible um, to make it real, the four agendas regarding collaboration. Uh, some theories today are studying these kind of conditions. So we have these, uh, those are for connection, alignment, learning and making. Uh, and all those traits are present in signing communities. So uh, what I want to say is not just rhetorical or theoretical, uh, but I just want to say that individuals that take part of these communities uh, build connection based on a strong, supportive, collective sense. So it is very powerful, uh, also individually and socially, uh, and way more if it begins from the school, from childhood. So uh, I just want to say that it would be great that ministries all over the world can think about these kind of methods or these kind of uh, ways to get to learning for the kids, uh, because sometimes that that's where the biggest criticism come to this kind of model. And thank you so much. Thank you, Diana. I have to say you never stop learning. And this is an interesting thing to hear inverse inclusion. So it's definitely something new and who knows, it might be the way forward too. So thank you so much for your presentation. Our next speaker is Ignacia Sovel, who is a project manager from Institute de la Sordera, and she comes all the way from Chile. So, floor is yours. Off you go. Thank you, Lydia. Well, good afternoon to you all. My name is, as Lydia said, uh, Ignacia Sobal. I'm, uh, for those who can see me, I'm a middle-aged woman with brown and gray hair, and I'm dressed in black and white. 
Before starting presenting our work, I would really like to uh, take some time to thank you, Zero Project, for having us and giving us our organization the opportunity to share our project with you today. We are we are very honored about this. Let me share with you uh, our work. Uh, our institution is named Enseñas Foundation del Instituto de la Sordera from Chile. Uh, Instituto de la Sordera was founded 65 years ago in Chile. And over the years, it has turned into a renowned inter intercultural and bilingual special school for deaf students. Currently, we have 113 deaf students enrolled from early education up to high school levels with deaf and hearing professionals collaborating in, in, in our school. We primarily communicate with our students using Chilean sign language, of course, and tailor our method methodologies <laughs> and resources to accommodate their needs while respecting deaf culture and language. Additionally, we are initiating inverse inclusion, as Diana also uh, talked about this, uh, by welcoming our first hearing students this year. As a second line of action, several years ago, we started to share our years of experience in deaf education with other professional teams at mainstream schools across our country, where deaf children are, uh, are attending. Most of them are attending in mainstream and less of them are attending special schools. So we, we think we can help these this schools to move forward. So our goal now is to lead the way in creating fairer society for deaf people by being allies in promoting their rights and opportunities. We work to spread awareness and inclusion through cultural and linguistic rights in mainstream schools where most of deaf student population are enrolled, aiming to improve quality education for them. We are nationally recognized now for our innovative approach to education, which we are willing to share with other institutions. Our expert team is constantly developing new strategies, resources, methodologies on teaching different contents to deaf students, visual, visual contents, also creating digital learning tools. And something that is very important to us is raising awareness about deaf culture and sign language as widely as possible in, in our country and our society. So annually, we offer bilingual education to over 100 students. We provide them with skills they need to succeed in life. We also train more than 300 professionals in the last years to be assist uh, to better assist deaf and hard, hard of hearing students in mainstream schools. Uh, we also teach uh, sign language uh, programs, uh, which are free to our student families, but we have them open to the rest of the community. And we are very proud to lead a government project that permits us to introduce Chilean sign language to mainstream schools where more than 500 hearing children now can communicate directly with their deaf classmates and friends. These are some of our achievements. Um, we, have, uh, we have worked in different projects with public and private funds, more than 20, and in, 19, in two, uh, 2022, uh, we received the uh, organization of our Ibero-American State and Fundación SM honored us with the Ibero-American Prize for Education in Human Rights for supporting the right of deaf children to be educated in their own language. We aim to, to support more mainstream schools in Chile and we are aiming to go to another country to work with uh, teachers there in South and Central America and the Caribbean too, improving deaf education sustainably, 
sustainably, ensuring financial viability and long-term success. So please, please feel free to contact us. You're welcome uh, to come to Chile and, and visit our school. Oh, there. <laughs> And share with you. Thank you very much, Ignacia. You, you finished quite quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you so much um, and for sure access to language is so important it doesn't matter the form you you have that access but the access has to be right for the person yeah, yeah. which receives and too often deaf children especially find themselves not receiving the right access so it's important so thank you so much for sharing your you. um, story you. and now we have yeah I, managing quite a few things together. We have a Pete and Hope, which is a Diaconian Ministry Association from Peru. And we have a Jessie Chavez with us here, who will introduce her school and the project. And um, what we will have is Jessie will speak in Spanish and she has an interpreter with her. So here is your, you just need to flick. The floor is yours, Jessie. Buenas tardes con todos. Eh, yo soy Jessie. Soy una mujer del Amazonas. Eh, cabello negro y tez morena. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Eh, I'm Jessie Chavez from the organization Peace and Hope. I'm an Amazonian woman with um, dark skin and uh, black hair. Yeah. Eh, vengo representando a la Asociación Paz y Esperanza. Paz y Esperanza, somos una organización que trabaja en América Latina en bien de las familias y comunidades vulnerables y en situación de pobreza. So I come representing the organization Pan, Paz y Esperanza, which to English it translates to Peace and Hope. Uh, we are a Latin American organization that works in Latin America in, uh, for the families and communities, uh, especially in vulnerable situations in the Amazonian uh, uh, zones of Peru that are in a poverty situation. We have as countries of support, the United States, France and Inglaterra. Uh, we have offices that support us and uh, support uh, our, our costs, but, uh, both in uh, the United States, France, and also in the UK. Trabajamos, nuestro trabajo es con niños y adolescentes, trabajamos con niños y jóvenes que son afectados por la desigualdad y la discriminación en etnias, procedencia y discapacidad. So they have three lines of work, but they mainly work with uh, children and adolescents that are affected, especially with uh, inequality and discrimination in Peru and in the Amazonian zones, and um, with, uh, that are mo mostly discriminated by their ethnicity, their origin, and of course their disability, um, trying to bring them uh, better opportunities and the opportunity to develop holistically. También estamos con el cuidado del ambiente y comunidades indígenas. Desarrollamos acciones de monitoreo, de deforestación en las regiones del Amazonas y en San Martín, priorizando la afección diferenciada a las mujeres. Um, a second line of work they have, it's the environmental care and the indigenous communities development, especially focuses uh, on women. They do uh, monitoring activities on the deforestation in the Amazonian regions with a special uh, attention to how it affects women in indigenous communities uh, in the regions of San Martin and the whole Amazonian region. Y trabajamos con personas con discapacidad, empoderamos a las personas con discapacidad en el conocimiento y ejercicio de sus derechos, fortaleciendo sus comunidades. Mm -hmm. And the, th the third line of work they have, it's, of course, people with disability, 
uh, they work directly with uh, trying to empower people with disability uh, in order to strengthen their communities um, and also uh, getting to uh, for them to no uh, get more knowledge um, uh, and pursue the rights and, um, and and create deaf communities in the Amazon regions. Hoy les presentamos el trabajo que hacemos en la Amazonía peruana con los niños y niñas y jóvenes sordos. Today we are presenting the work that we are doing with people with disabilities, with deaf children, adolescents and adults in the Peruvian Amazonian region. En el 2012, Paz y Esperanza inicia el proyecto buscando e identificando a las familias con niños sordos en el área de las provincias de Rioja y Moyobamba, mm -hmm. encontrando a niños y adolescentes sordos que nunca tuvieron contacto con la lengua de señas y menos con una escuela. So the project started in 2012 by identifying these families in the Amazonian uh, regions of Peru and trying to congregate them in order to create these communities and um, um, in the provinces of Moyobamba and Rioja, finding children and adolescent, uh, adolescents or teenagers who are deaf uh, that never actually had any contact with uh, the Peruvian sign language and uh, that didn't even have access to formal education. Durante varios años, el programa se centra única y exclusivamente en la enseñanza de la lengua de seña a, a los sordos y a las familias. So, uh, during the first years of the program, the, pro, uh, the program uh, focus was basically to uh, teach the Peruvian uh, language sign to the children and also their families in the Amazonian region. Durante este proceso se crea y se fortalece la comunidad en su identidad y cultura sorda. At the same time, uh, they have the focus on uh, creating this community uh, and for, uh, strengthening also the deaf culture in the Amazonian regions. A raíz de que nuestros estudiantes sienten eh, la necesidad y el deseo de expandir sus conocimientos, progresivamente hemos incrementado otras competencias educativas como las matemáticas, la ecología, ciencias y el español escrito. So, uh, due to the students wanting to actually increase uh, and amplify their knowledge uh, since they didn't have, even have any access to formal education prior to the start of the program, um, in the last years, the program has focused on also expanding their, uh, their curriculum to other uh, other areas of education, and they are starting to actually teach uh, Spanish, spoken Spanish, uh, math mathematics, science, and ecology. Cursos o, o materias que en las escuelas o con oyentes ellos lo vieron, pero nunca lo entendieron. Uh, well, these are uh, courses that actually they didn't even have the opportunity to under actually understand on one side because they didn't have the access to formal education, but on the other side, because uh, if they had the access to formal education, these were uh, not deaf schools, so they didn't have the chance to actually understand the content that they were uh, learning. Porque en las escuelas con oyentes no tenemos intérpretes de lengua de señas ni profesores que sepan el idioma. Because in the Peruvian Amazonian uh, zones, they don't have uh, interpreters uh, that actually understand the uh, a Peruvian sign language, so they didn't have the chance to understand. Hoy les quiero presentar uh, con mucha emoción a Charles Michel de Lepe. Mm -hmm. Es una propuesta educativa que busca promover la educación bilingüe bicultural para las personas sordas. So today, why, what we want to, or she wants to introduce very, and she's very excited to present, is the Charles Michel de Lepe project, uh, which is an educational proposal that tries to promote the bilingual educational and bicultural um, education for deaf people. Charles Michel de Lepe alberga 60 estudiantes sordos. Muchos de ellos viven en zonas rurales muy alejadas. Y desde el 2022 recibe a un niño oyente y a niños sordos a Guajun. Mm -hmm. So the Charles Michel de la Pé School, uh, it's an inclusive uh, center of education that has more than 60 uh, deaf students 
most of them coming from rural, very remote zones in the Peruvian Amazonian, Amazoni, um, uh, Amazonas. <laughs> Uh, and even since 2022, uh, the, they have their first hearing student and a deaf, um, a deaf, a deaf student as well that comes from the Ayawahun community, which is an indigenous community in the Amazonian. So, so they're speaking three languages. <laughs> eh, hemos logrado redes y alianzas con instituciones del Estado para capacitar con talleres en lengua de seña a profesores, policías, fiscales de manera gratuita. So the project not only involves a school, it also involves uh, the creation of networks and alliances uh, with different state institutions okay. uh, to uh, form uh, in different workshops to uh, teachers from the community, police, uh, police officers, fiscal judged uh, in a free way and uh, creating also employment for deaf people who actually leaves the school. También contamos con una organización de padres que hacen incidencias en el estado para bien de sus derechos. They have a, also a family and parents association that works in order to uh, promote and advocate for the inclusion of deaf uh, language in a formal school system and they actually develop a regional uh, a regional uh, regulation in order to actually uh, be able to pressure the state for uh, this discuss con estas este grupo de padres hemos logrado crear una ordenanza regional para la, el reconocimiento y la promoción de la lengua de señas so with this really uh, with this regional regulation they have been able to recognize and promote the uh, Peruvian sign language in other schools and in the sound of the uh, Amazon. Um, les quiero presentar a Angie, una niña aguajún, que se ha adaptado muy rápidamente al idioma lengua de señas, siendo sus padres hablantes no español. So we have uh, a life story that is Angie. Uh, she is a um, she is a, a child that is from the Ayawu Ayawahu community, which is an indigenous community in the Amazonian, and she has very rapidly adapted to the Peruvian sign language learning um, system, even when uh, her parents do not even um, manage the Peruvian spoken language. Yeah. Y también tenemos a a Janina. Mm -hmm. Eh, Janina antes era estudiante, ahora es profesora de los niños. Ella ha sufrido mucha discriminación en su escuela porque no tenía profesores eh, que sepan el idioma y tampoco un intérprete. So the other life story that she wants to introduce is Janina, which used to be a, actually a student of the, of the school, but is now a teacher. And not a formal teacher, but she is a volunteer teacher that teaches the sign language in school. Uh, she used to be a very discriminated student in other formal school systems because the teachers didn't know uh, Peruvian sign language, so she wasn't actually able to learn uh, in the schools, and she had to drop the educational system also because of she was being discriminated by her um, schoolmates and teachers as well. Muchas gracias. Ah, that's that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse. This is a really inspiring story and project. Thank you for bringing it here and sharing with the world. And you know, wow, from no access to language, moving to three languages. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Give her a clap again. Fantastic. So we have now our last, but not the very last speaker, who is Johanna Steiner from Austria, so local this time. And she's a senior learning and business development manager in the company called Linvago, which is, no, Linvano, apologies, um, which is a, um, a training up, train, uh, or company training in sign languages, few sign languages now. So I will leave it with you because you are the best person to introduce your project. So floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, Lydia. 
I think it's great that we're an all-female panel. I really love that. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, what's a bit difficult for me, and we had an internal discussion about this, how we do it best. Um, we're all hearing or hard of hearing, but to not end up pitching here and really have the possibility to go a bit deeper, we decided that I'll be speaking today and tomorrow I will be presenting with my colleague um, uh, Cecilia tomorrow and we will be signing. So. We're trying to do our best to represent the deaf community where they matter most. So about me, I'm a, a middle-aged white woman uh, wearing a green dress and a white blazer and I have long brown hair. So about Lingvano, you already introduced it, uh, Lydia, thank you. Um, it was co-founded in 2018. It was co-founded by three people two of them hearing and one of them deaf. So the deaf community has been involved from the very start to create a product, not only about the community, but with them. And in 2019, we started our very first course in Austrian Sign Language because we're based in Austria. And um, a year later, we released our app version to make it more accessible and more usable. Another year later in 2021, we uh, release our American Sign Language course, uh, which has been our most successful so far because the most users, they are in not only in the US, but in Canada too. We have a very huge user base there. And in 2022, we introduced British Sign Language. Um, last year, we reached one and a half million users by the end of the year, which is amazing. And what I wanted to point out as well is that we are 100% self-funded. So about the team, as I already told you, we are mixed. There are deaf colleagues, there are hard of hearing colleagues, and they are hearing colleagues, and about a quarter of them are hard of hearing and deaf. And what's most important is that all our teachers are deaf. There are no hearing people standing in front of the camera. Um, there are some hearing people in the content team, um, which who plan everything um, and uh, design everything. And we um, use our knowledge and expertise to, to make the best learning experiences possible, but always with our deaf colleagues. And of course, we uh, offer qualified uh, job opportunities for people with disabilities. Um, we work with another and not um, there, we work on eye level. And what I like as well is that a third of our development team is female, and I have not come across that uh, very often. As I mentioned already, we're multilingual, we're international, and um, we live what we preach. So we every week we have sign language interpreters coming. Everyone knows or learns at least one sign language, if not more. So what's our aim? Our aim is to facilitate communication, to achieve more accessibility for deaf people around the world, around the globe. We want, we are international, we want to make it more international. And we want to achieve the most accessibility for deaf signing people as possible and build bridges between the deaf and the hearing world. So how can we achieve this? Um, the, more, the more people know how to sign, the more access they have to daily life, daily business, um, doctor's appointments, just going to the grocery store, running to the shops, or even during their jobs uh, in educational settings, in their schools, in universities, whatever you can think of, wherever they have access in sign language, it's accessible to them. And we offer a fun and easy way, and it's very flexible. As long as you have internet access, um, you can use our app. And for as long as you like, if it's five minutes a day or 10 minutes, you make a great progress. So I told you about it, and I'm sure you're curious, how does it look like? In this video, we um, assembled uh, some, some screen videos in app so that you get an idea what it looks like and how does it work. OK, the audio is not working anymore <laughs> again. <laughs> um, I was warned that might happen. So here 
you can see dialogues, you can see the mirror feature, uh, you can compare your signing to uh, our teachers. Um, it's micro learning. Um, yeah, we have a streak. So if you come back every day, you you uh, have a more uh, streak longer each day. Some of our users already have more than a year. I'm really impressed by that. And uh, you can make the video slower. You can't accelerate them yet. So, but um, yeah, you can make them slower to see it better. Here's a fill in the gap question. And at the end of each lesson, you get shown the percentage, how good you were, how much you achieved. Thank you. <laughs> So what does stand out? Um, we have a great user engagement and it's really fun and easy to learn. It's really short while. I love to learn it myself. I use it to learn American Sign Language. It's a new sign language for me. I started to learn it one year ago and I, I'm already at a conversational level. So it works really well. And yeah, you can make great progress with only investing 10 minutes a day. If you're just in line queuing or collecting your children or whatever, commuting on the way to work, you can always use our app. And the gamification makes it really fun. Uh, we don't offer just a course with three trainers. So one's vocabulary, one's spelling, and one's numbers. And we have a dictionary. So if you can't think of a certain sign, you can look it up in our dictionary. And we constantly feed the dictionary with new signs that are not necessarily in the course, but we add more there constantly. And Last week, or was it two weeks ago, we reached two million users. So imagine that. We got founded in 2018 and we had a significant grow, especially in the last one and a half years. And we are really proud of that. And in the US Apple Store ranking, we have been in the top three for the last months next to Babel and Duolingo. So you know those huge language learning apps and we're number two and number three constantly battling a little bit with Babel. Um, yes, but we're really proud of that too. So the outlook, what would, what do you want to achieve the next months and next years? So of course we want to reach even more people. So the more people learn sign language, the more accessible the world gets for deaf lang uh, sign language users. Uh, we're already working on additional BSL content. Um, we want to um, offer as much content as possible, of course, and we will add more sign languages bit by bit, but there will be more. And we want to expand our B2B program. This way we can um, um, involve more companies, more universities, more schools to make their environment accessible for deaf sign language users too. Yes, and of course, we will continue our ambition to make the world a more inclusive place for deaf sign language users and deaf people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Johanna. To be honest, ASL, 2 million users, that's a lot. But yeah, I think, you know, from my observations to ASL is one of the most popular ones. So, and grow, the way you grow as a new startup, amazing. So I would like to apologize to um, anyone who I for whom I did not introduce myself properly, but I decided to leave until the end. I am a dark blonde, middle-aged woman wearing black jacket and patterned shirt. So my sincere apologies for not introducing earlier. Now my question is to the timekeepers, if we have some time, 10 minutes, Right, so let's find out if there is any questions from the floor. Oh, we have, I've got some questions prepared, but I don't need, so wonderful. So can we have a rowing mic? Ah, yeah, oh, sorry, uh, apologies, yeah. So go on, the man in the back, then the lady in this, with the, yeah, you will be second, yep. Yeah. And then the third person, yeah, go ahead, please. Sorry, so I um, 
Thank you. I'm Edward Winter from World Vision. Um, very interesting presentations. I'm just interested in, it seemed like all of the school-based models were bringing children from different areas to one school. I wondered if any of you have plans to be able to reach out to rural communities so that parents don't have to send their children to a boarding school to get good sign language or good education. Thanks. Thank you. And Velaide in the middle. I, uh, my question is to Joanna. Uh, you said uh, that your app is 100% funded. Uh, I just wanted to understand it a bit more. How do you fund it? Uh, where do you get the funds from? And would you be able to expand it to Turkish language uh, in the future as well? Thank you for your question. So we're 100% self-funded. It is a subscription-based model. So our users pay, they can choose if they want to pay monthly, quarterly, or a yearly fee. That's basically how we fund ourselves. Yeah, and Turkish sign language, um, I don't think it's on the list quite yet on the, on the very top, but there are many sign language on there. And um, yeah, we will choose very soon which one is going to be next. Thank you. And I uh, apologize for the first question. Your question was to who? Just to general, to the panel? Yeah, everyone except Johanna, I think. Okay, <laughs> so can you repeat, can you repeat your, your, um, your question to the panel so you see who wants to pick up? Yeah, so it's just, um, are any of you working on solutions so that, that they can, children can learn sign language in their own rural communities without having to go to boarding school or their parents to move to the city? Pick it up. Um, okay, so go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Yes, um, we have tried uh, digital apps as well to try to get to the to the homes of these kids that are far away. Uh, sometimes it's kind of difficult because in the rural areas in Colombia, not everybody has connection. So. Um, we, we thought at the beginning it was a good solution, but it's not very easy. So the way in which we are using these uh, digital apps is mainly also to get to parents of students that have a mobile phone so that they can just uh, study because it is also difficult for them because of their economical condition to just go to the school and learn. So the best way you we found was through technologies. It's just uh, a good tool but with this uh, exception of the connection problem that no everybody, especially in the rural or, for example, for indigenous communities in the country, is very difficult to have an access to them. So, yes, and, and there's something else that we found, for example, during the 2020 year, and is that uh, presence is important. You can use the tools, the technological tools, but uh, to educate little kids, we have kids since three years old, you need a t-shirt that is in front that accompany all the process. Uh, so yes, it's not very easy, but well, we're trying with different tools. Okay, go ahead and then Jesse. Uh, we do something similar than in Colombia, but also we work with teachers on the rural schools, mainstream schools, because most children attend those schools. They don't come to uh, to main cities to study. They they remain in their in their local areas, and so we what we want to achieve is getting to more of those schools and train those teachers that are having children in their schools. Thank you. Thank you. And Jesse? Uh, okay, so what Jesse says is that the aim of this project is actually to uh, develop the sign language in the rural communities, especially in the Amazonian zone. So, um, the project actually has achieved that the children, uh, deaf children in the Amazonian on very remote areas and in very high poverty conditions uh, have been able to come out of this um, isolation status and learn the sign language when they actually hadn't had the opportunity because they didn't even have access to 
normal or mainstream, the traditional or ma mainstream schools. So um, uh, the focus is not only on rural communities, but also in indigenous communities, such as the Ayahuahu, Ayahu community uh, in the Amazonian, and also with uh, migrant childs as well. And the focus is not only to uh, reach these communities so they have to go to this school, it's also to strengthen the students so when they grow up, they can become new teachers on their own communities um, because they, they actually come from very isolated communities as well. And at the same time, they have this uh, regional regulation that it's very, uh, it's fighting to implement the Peruvian sign language in mainstream schools and to recognize the Charles um, Michel de Lepe school as a, main, as a formal school system as well with the parents and the teachers and volunteers in the school. Thank you so, very, so much um, for this. And the lady on the side, yes, could you ask me questions, please? Well, um, my first uh, question would be, uh, first of all, I would uh, like to say congratulations for your project. It sounds everything very, very amazing. And uh, for me, it's just uh, only question that it's a bit, a bit open um, to see so many hearing people speaking about sign language. It's quite strange for me, honestly. You know, uh, I have today two interpreters with me because uh, I need them for communicate with you. And uh, it would be nice if uh, there were also deaf individuals with you uh, in up and the stage to can communicate with them directly. Uh, and my question is, if you have also deaf co-workers who join you to similar uh, uh, events uh, and can speak directly to, to, uh, to them, to, to the peers. And the second question would be if you have a proper uh, sign language curriculum implemented in, in, in the schools by law in your country. Thank you. Thank you so much. And who would like to pick up? Okay, so go, Nasha. Thank you. Thank you for your for your question um, and your, your reflection about this. I'm, I'm aware of that. Uh, one of the of the points we were asked for to come here and present is to present in English. So that was very difficult for one of our members uh, or deaf members. We are many deaf uh, person at our team uh, to come and present in English. Um, we didn't know how uh, we could not afford having more people coming from our organization also. So it was very difficult for us to bring a deaf person. We would really like to do that. Uh, our The director of our school is a deaf person. So uh, we really try to get uh, them on the first line when we present our project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. So any more questions? No, um, is it time now or do we have some time yet? Just one minute. Oh no, we're not going to push it. <laughs> Nobody will be able to answer. I'll just ask a question and then that's it. So okay, thank you so much uh, to everyone, to the um, presenters today who presented amazing projects. Thank you very much for bringing them Excuse and me? well done to you. Excuse me, I had just one more question about the uh, oh. uh, scholar curriculum in your country. I would like to know if you have a proper curriculum, sign language curriculum implemented in your country and and uh, uh, recognized by law. Um, thank you. At the moment, we can't continue. We have to stop. Um, but you can take this with um, the presenters off site and continue the conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for participating with us. Thank you. Bye bye.